News at 6 begins now. Let's get right into some breaking news. A Kootenai County Sheriff's Office confirming two people have died from a plane crash in Coeur d'Alene Lake near Black Rock Bay and Powderhorn Bay. We're told there are no survivors at this time, but the number of people in the crash still unknown. Nicole Hernandez live on scene right now. Nicole, what do you see there? Yeah, so right now I am near Powderhorn Bay. Like you mentioned, it is in the middle of the bay. So we're not seeing too much activity from the edges of the bay right now. But uh, the county sheriff's office says that boaters can still be out on the water. Even though these two planes did crash, there is still debris in the water, according to the sheriff's office. Now, they did say that witnesses saw this plane crash happen. They say that two small planes crashed into each other and into the lake. Now, again, like you mentioned, Mentioned. We still don't know exactly how many people there were, but Kootenai County Sheriff's Office says there are no survivors. So the National Transportation Safety Board will be taking over this investigation. They'll be coming in from Seattle either this evening, more likely tomorrow morning though, and they will continue. Um, one thing that I have noticed well out here, I don't know if you can hear it. It's a little bit faint for me, so you probably cannot hear it through my mic, but there is a helicopter up around this area. It was going from north to south earlier. Now it's floating around this uh, north side of the Powderhorn Bay area. Uh, that has been up. Also, boaters are out looking uh, for the debris and any um, recovering that they need to be doing out in the middle of the bay or of the lake in between those two bays where Kootenai County Sheriff's Office says that this happened. Live from Coeur d'Alene, I'm Nicole Hernandez. All right, Nicole, thank you so much. We also do know that people can still be on the water at this time. They do ask for people to move out of the way if they are investigating and researching that area at this time. And the story is still developing. We'll have more coverage on this coming up at 630. And for more updates, you can always head to creme.com. There you'll get the latest information about this crash. All right, let's turn to weather now. Uh, it's even better today than it was yesterday. The weather was really picture perfect out there. So Michelle, are you enjoying this weather? Now, oh, definitely. I love sunshine and I don't even mind if it gets <laughs> I don't even mind if it gets even a little bit warmer into the mid 80s and 90s aren't too bad, but we certainly have had very comfortable temperatures outside and plenty of sunshine. Taking a look at satellite and radar clear skies pretty much throughout the inland northwest. Just a few fair weather cumulus out there, especially over the mountains and temperature wise. Looking good, 78 in Spokane, upper 70s across the northern Panhandle, and mid-80s in Moses Lake and Omak, lower 80s down in Lewiston. Here's a look at the next 12 hours. Quiet weather for the rest of the evening, so beautiful weather to be outside. Clear skies overnight. Overnight low temperatures dropping down into the low to mid-50s and plenty of sunshine tomorrow. Just a couple of degrees warmer, highest in the lower 80s. We do have a chance of some showers Monday night into Tuesday. That'll knock temperatures back just a little bit, but still not bad. 75 on Tuesday and dry weather returns on Wednesday with a high of 76. All right, thanks so much, Michelle. Well, another wave of cancellations rolled down tonight during Northern Quest Casino's announcement of a huge change in their summer plans. Their outdoor concert season will be delayed until next year because of rising COVID concerns. Creme 2's Brandon Jones has the story. Northern Quest said they're doing this out of an abundance of caution and safety for their customers here in Spokane. This year, plenty of events have been canceled. Right now, I'm at the Riverfront Pavilion. This is a spot that was supposed to be flourishing with concerts and outdoor events this entire summer. This morning, Mayor Woodward brought up the idea of possibly returning some of those canceled events. The politicians are dividing us, no, no. It's going to be a while before we see anything like this in Spokane again. Even with the recent optimism from Mayor Nadine Woodward about outdoor events, the artists who were already set to perform at the casino this summer have committed to a return next year with new dates. In a statement from the general manager, the casino said they were hopeful COVID numbers would be low in Spokane by this time, so it was a tough decision making the call to postpone. Before Northern Quest made the announcement, Mayor Woodward took to Facebook this morning while addressing safety protocols for the 4th of July weekend. In the post, she talks about the importance of wearing a mask and how it's less likely for the virus to spread outdoors. Woodward then goes on to say the following. The Spokane Regional Health District says just a handoff of positive COVID cases are linked to the protests that attracted thousands of people to Riverfront Park during several weekends. If that's the case, let's bring back those outdoor summer events that have been canceled. 
The mayor isn't the only one who supports this idea. Because uh, I think that there are a lot of things that we can do, particularly outside. So even with our trivia business, even though most of our games got hit, we have a couple that we've reopened because we were able to figure out a way to do it outside. Bent Events is a company in Spokane that's seen several of their plants canceled throughout the year. They're in favor of more outdoor activities as long as they can be done in a safe manner. So I think that opening up outdoor events would be good not only for our, for our business but also for the community to be able to have some human interaction again. So what are the actual chances we could see outdoor events return to Spokane this summer? In talks with Dr. Bob Lutz from the Health District, he said the chances are slim. Outdoor activities are much indeed safer than indoor activities, but we have seen a spread related to outdoor events like going to the beach. So for right now, the chances are very slim of any concerts or large outdoor gatherings returning this summer here in Spokane. From Riverfront Park, Brandon Jones, Crim2 News. And in case you missed the latest announcement on the new mask mandate here in Washington State, starting Tuesday, businesses will not be allowed to serve customers who are not wearing a mask. The governor also announced a two-week pause on all applications to advance to next phases. And third, bars are still allowed to start back up in phase three of the reopening plan, but they won't be allowed to have bar seating. And looking ahead now, Bloom's Day going virtual this year. For the first time in the event's history, participants can run or walk the race virtually. Bloom's Day still intends to move forward with its in-person race on September 20th, but this is an alternative if you rather do it virtually. You can still earn your finisher t-shirt by completing a 7.46 mile course of your choosing. You have between September 18th and 20th to do so. We do have a link to enter that virtual race on our website, creme.com. And as schools across the inland northwest scramble to figure out what school is going to be like in the fall, one organization is thriving. Krem 2's Whitney Ward spoke with a regional vice president about why some families who have never thought about virtual learning are suddenly giving it another look. A number of families were distraught, uh, um, maybe uh, less than thrilled uh, last spring when their districts were thrown into basically crisis schooling, right? Um, and through no fault of the districts. I mean, they, they hadn't planned to become fully virtual in the, you know, the blink of an eye, right? Um, but that's what happened. What kind of feedback are you getting from families right now? The parents with looking at what their options are for their fall. And I think districts did the best that they could with the time period that they had to come up with solutions for their students. Um, and for many districts, that meant finding a platform quickly. It meant how are they going to put the curriculum online? How are they going to train their teachers to deliver content um, when they weren't face to face with their students? Um, so they, again, did the best they could, but it ne necessarily wasn't ne a smooth educational process. To contrast that with the, the virtual schools in, in Idaho and Washington, Washington Virtual Academy, Idaho Virtual Academy, those schools have been in existence for a number of years, really, you know, 10, 12, 15 plus years, and have always been virtual programs. And so they, they know how to do this. What about the American Academy of Pediatrics, which just came out this week saying that kids really do belong in a classroom setting. Yeah, I, I, I did see that. You know, there's, there's a part of me that completely understands why they came out with that. And certainly that is going to be the best choice for maybe even the majority of families. But it may not be the best choice for all families based on different circumstances and needs. I think it's important for parents to have this option and a number of other options available because the needs of our children today are just so diverse. Um, you know, no, 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 no two children are the same. They aren't in my household, and I'm sure they're not in any other household either. So some students just thrive in a in a brick and mortar school where they can be actively involved in sports and drama or whatever it might be you know, other students that may not be what's best for them. A lot of times people have not had great positive associations with the idea of distance learning and virtual schooling. Has this kind of been a moment for you to highlight what you guys are capable of doing? 
Yeah, I really think I really think it, it has been. I think that this is a really important time in education. I, I'm sad that it's taken a, a national illness to get here. Um, but I think the conversation we're having right now and how to best meet the needs of students in various educational settings is a really important one. Um, and I'm glad that virtual education is a piece of it. And I hope that folks give it a chance all right, we'll still ahead here. If you think wearing a mask while grocery shopping is annoying, imagine wearing one for several hours while delivering your first child. We'll hear from a local couple after the break.